PeteTools.com. G'day guys, Pete from Pete's Tools. How are we all going today? Hey, another one of your questions from you guys I get quite often is, does CO2 make a good weld? Well, I suppose you have to be a good welder before you can make any good weld, and I'm not a good welder, I just stick shit together in the shed. But I reckon CO2 is alright for a shielding gas. Especially for me, because I'm cheap. CO2 is as cheap as you can get here. Mind you, everything's expensive here. So I'll go for the cheapest option all the time. Anyway, guys, same as usual. Like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Remember to say thank you with the thank you button down below if you want to give the old get a tip. Always check out my blog at peachtools.com. All sorts of other new videos there for you to watch. Hundreds and hundreds of them. Anyway, guys, enough crap from me. Let's do some welding with CO2. Yeah! Now, I don't know if you guys have noticed or not, CO2 is a really, really cold gas. Sometimes when you get a new cylinder filled up, there'll be a whole lot of ice and shit on your cylinder because it's really, really cold. And because it comes out of the cylinder at such high pressure, it's even colder. So what I'm using here is, if you notice here, I've got a flow meter. But if we turn around the other side of it, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Let's turn it around, Pete. Yeah! I've got this big thing out here, and you know what that is, guys? That's a heater. So what that does is it heats the CO2 as it comes out into the regulator before it goes into my torch. And if you notice here, it's got a cord here, and then the other end of it here plugs into the back of my welder. It's a 24 volt heater. I find if I don't have the heater plugged in, or I don't have it turned on, then my weld quality, you know, goes to shit. Not that I'm a good welder anyway, but even I can notice the difference. Yee -haw! So what I'll do guys, if I'm not trying to save gas, I've got a whole lot of other videos about saving welding gas, shielding gas and all sorts of other stuff. If you want to have a look at them, I'll put the links in the description below. But if I'm not saving gas, all I do is just have this, I would set it just for general purpose welding, to between, well, between about 10 and 15 millilitres per second. See that guys? Yeah, just about 10 there. 15s here, so we're about between 10 and 15. Now I use this sort of gauge. I use this flow meter rather than just the normal regulator, because one, it's got a heater on it from the CO2, and I can see exactly what's coming out of the end of the torch, and I like to really be able to control how much gas I'm using. Because not only is it bloody expensive here in New Zealand, but it's a pain in the ass having to go and fill up the bottle all the time as well. So the less that I can get away with, the best, as far as I'm concerned. So guys, I'm only welding about three or four mil plate, so I find that that between 10 and 15 millilitres per second works out for me, but it's just gonna depend on how thick you're wanting to weld and how strong you need your weld to be. Like I keep saying, I'm just sticking shit together in my workshop, so we're not making battleships, so it doesn't matter if it's, you know, it doesn't matter if it's not 100% strong, no one's gonna die if the weld fails, that's what I'm trying to say. So the settings that I'm using for the CO2 is between 10 and 15 millilitres per second. So guys, we'll just weld these two lumps of plate together and we'll see what that setting looks like, eh? There we go. So what did that look like guys? Let's have a look. See if we can zoom in a bit. As you can see guys, not a bad looking weld. I mean it's not perfect. I don't claim to be an expert welder. Like I say, I just like sticking shit together in the garage. But this is no way in hell that's gonna fall off there. A good penetration. Let's have a look on the other side. We have a look on the other side guys. You can see the heat's penetrated right through. So we've got about as good a shielding gas as we're gonna get. Like I say, between 10 and 15 millilitres per second. Awesome! Let's see if we can snap the sucker off. See how good Pete's welding is. If you have a look there guys, it didn't bend on the weld, it bent above the weld, so I don't think we're going to snap that off there guys. Not bad for a boy, cheap CO2, I love it, yeah! Now I've got some other videos guys about using CO2, but I've done some videos on how little you can use and still actually weld with it. 
obviously my sweet spot is like I say between 10 and 15 milliliters but you have to have the CO2 heater on as well to make it weld properly well that's what I found anyway but if you're a skin flint like me you can get away with about between 2 and 3 milliliters per second which is pretty well stretching it but it'll still stick shit together and it's still a lot better than not using any gas at all because if you try and do it without a gas at all it's going to fall to pieces unless you're using flux core of course Anyway, that was a little video from me. More shit that you didn't need to know. CO2 welding. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it indifferent? Pete loves it. Same as usual, guys. You like my video, subscribe. Drop me a like. Drop me a comment. Come say good day to me at Pete'sTools.com. We've got hundreds of other videos here you can look at. Or we've got some blogs you can read as well. Remember, if you want to say thanks to the old git, we've got a thank you button now down below. Thanks to YouTube. Yeah! And uh, subscribe. Hey, lots of shit to do for you fellas. Anyway, see you next time. Bye. Peachtools.com.com.